Let us look at classification of solids. Depending on the arrangement of constituent particles, solids can be defined as either crystalline solids or amorphous solids. First, we will look at crystalline solids. Crystalline solids are homogeneous solids in which the constituent particles like ions, molecules are arranged in an orderly manner, orderly repeating manner. The arrangement of particles in crystalline solids is such that the intermolecular forces of attraction is maximum. The forces responsible for stability of the solid can be covalent bonds, ionic bonds or van der Waals forces of attraction. Crystalline solids are made up of small tiny crystals and these crystals are called as unit cells. Unit cells are the basic repeating units of crystalline solids. Due to the orderly arrangement of constituent particles in crystalline solids, they have a sharp melting point and they melt down completely at a particular temperature. Now there are various physical properties of these solids which can be refractive index, electrical conductance etc. And all these physical properties vary with the, vary, uh, with the varying direction. Like let us understand this with the help of this example. In this example, the constituent particles of the solid are particle 1 which are represented by these dots. Particle 2 are these dots. Now when for example, if I want to measure the refractive index of this solid, if I measure in this particular direction that is AB, the constituent particles all are all of the same type which is of particle 2 and that is why this will give one value. When I measure the same refractive index in this particular direction, it will pass through these constituent particles which are of type particle 1. And similarly, when I try to measure refractive index in this particular direction, I see that this is particle uh, 2, particle 1, particle 2, particle 1. So the refractive index will vary in all three directions. And this particular property is called as an isotropy. Isotropy means same in all directions. An isotropy will be the opposite of that. That is we have different values of properties in different directions. And this phenomena is called as an isotropy. Let us look at further classification of solids. The second part is amorphous structure. Now the substances which appear like solids but do not have a perfect crystalline structure are called as amorphous solids. Now as we can see in crystalline structure there is a pattern which repeats again and again and this repetition is long range. Whereas as we can see here is no definite pattern and it does not repeat. Even if it repeats, it repeats only in a short range. And that is the reason why we do not have a definite melting temperature of amorphous solids. Instead they melt over a range of temperatures. Now as we have seen various properties of crystalline solids, similarly we may also have various properties of amorphous solids. And these properties may be dielectric constant, electrical conductance, refractive index etc. And all these physical properties are the same in every direction. And this particular phenomena of amorphous solids is called as isotropy. Let us look at the differences between crystalline solids and amorphous solids. The first point being shape. Crystalline solids have a regular shape whereas amorphous solids have a irregular shape. The second point being melting point. Melting point of crystalline solids is very sharp because of its regular structure and crystalline solids may completely melt down at a particular temperature. Whereas amorphous solids do not have a sharp melting point. Instead, they melt over a range of temperature. The next point is heat of fusion. What do we understand by heat of fusion? How much amount of heat is required to melt a particular solid? As we have a constant melting point here, we have definite amount of heat energy which is required. Whereas we do not have definite 
heat of fusion in amorphous solids. Next state, in state the crystalline solids are called as true solids whereas the amorphous solids are called as super cooled liquids. The next point is nature. As you have seen the properties of crystalline solids differ with the direction and that is the reason why they are called as anisotropic. Whereas in amorphous solids all the property values are same in all the directions and that is the reason why they are called as isotropic. The last point being examples, examples of crystalline solids are graphite, diamond, NaCl, KCl etc which are also called as potassium chloride and sodium chloride and the examples of amorphous solids are tar, rubber, plastic etc. The process of formation of crystal solids is called as crystallization. During crystallization it may happen that there are some defects and these defects are called as line, line defect or else point defect. Now point defect occurs due to irregularity of points which can be ions, atoms or molecules in the crystal lattice. Whereas line defects occur due to irregularities in the constituent particles of a whole line of lattice that is cations, anions or molecules are not regularly arranged. Point defects can be further classified as vacancy defect, interstitial defect and impurity defect. Let us look at the first point, vacancy defect. Vacancy defects are formed during the process of crystallization. During the process of crystallization, it may happen that some portion of the crystal are left vacant. As we can see here, this portion is left vacant. Similarly here, the portion is left vacant and there is no cation or no anion in this particular location. And that is why it is called as a vacancy defect because that particular location is vacant. The other part is interstitial defect. In interstitial defect, the cation or the anion is still present in the crystal but it occupies some interstitial position in the crystal lattice. What will happen? The cation which was present here has left and moved on to the interstitial location between these four. Similarly, here also it has moved to a interstitial location. In this particular case, it will affect the density of the crystal. Whereas in this particular case, the density of the crystal is not affected because the cation or the anion is still present in the crystal lattice. The third type are impurity defect. Now the two types in impurity defect are first substitution impurity defect and second interstitial impurity defect. In the first part which is substitution impurity defect, the regular cations here for example copper which are the regular cations are replaced by some different cations which are of zinc. As you can see here the orange colored cations are of zinc. So these zinc cations will replace the regular copper cation. On the other hand in interstitial impurity defect what will happen? The different cations will occupy the interstitial position here. So as we can see this is the example of stainless steel which is an alloy in which the regular cations are iron and we are introducing carbon cations in between these interstitial positions. So these were some types of defects.